call to order the August 5th meeting of the Miami Township Board of Trustees. I will entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of our last regular meeting, July 15th. So moved. Second. Any comments, discussion? I'm good. I sent mine too. Um, Trustee Moore sent me a typo on uh, spelling of a name and it has been corrected. Can we call the roll, please? It's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the July 15, 2024 meeting. Uh, Ms. Moser? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. Uh, entertain a motion to approve payment of bills. Whoops! Mm. Totally eighty-five thousand. <laughs> what I do? What I write? Eighty-five thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars and seventy-two cents. I'm exclaiming on how it's higher than oh. most months. There is a special meeting minutes noted for approval. Right. Excuse me. Back up. Uh, entertain motion to pass the special meeting minutes from July 29. So moved. Second. And nice, 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 nicely transcribed. Thanks. It, it captured the, the essence of the meeting perfectly. Yes, thank you. This was an executive session that had no decision, so the minutes are basically. No, we had a decision. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Very brief. Very brief minutes. Been moved and second. Call moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the special meeting of July 29, 2024. Mr. Moser? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Minutes of adopters? Yes. Again, I'd entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling $85,136.72. So I move that we pay those. Break them down or just let them go? I forgot our routine. General fund, $9,506.22. Cemetery, $5,700.50. Fire fund, $25,664.04. And the road fund, $44,265.96. And Gina, never mind, it doesn't matter unless you do. I hear? I'll, I'll move for approval. And I'll second. Uh, I assume the road fund is paying for some of our summer upgrades. Equipment. Uh, this is equipment, not the road paving? That was probably for a new piece of equipment. The new mower. Uh, it could be some paving on the No, we're pay, paying is yet too. Hey, it was, I emailed you guys about yeah. the third, yeah. that large hand like, Yeah, it's yeah. close. It's 38 grand for the road paving, so I, I thought uh, more to come. More, more roads. Could we call people. the roll? It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of 85,136.72 as enumerated. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion to approve. So we have folks here from. Yellow Springs Development Corporation and from Tecumseh Land Trust. Uh, unless either of you folks are in terrible hurry, I would like to finish our reports and then have new business. Uh, fire department report. Okay. Uh, since last meeting, we had uh, 36 EMS calls. 15 fire uh, requested for mutual aid from us, one time none for fire, and then we, we received six EMS and two for fire. Um, and really awesome news, Justin is set to return to full duty uh, the third week in August. Um, his last session for PT, I think, is the 12th, and then he's just waiting to go see the orthopod. So we are ready to have him back, and he is very excited to be back. You remind us he was hurt at the Hawthorne. Correct. Exactly. And 
What month was that? Yeah. August. Yeah. It's been, it's been a year. Yep, correct. <laughs> um, August 3rd, uh, fireworks parade and a touch of truck, all that went flawlessly from my perspective, so that was great. Good to have a redo. Um, Medic 82 had brake repair, and I do know how to spell brake, not as in a fracture. Um, of course, I printed it all out and stapled it and walked over here, and I'm like, really? <laughs> uh, that's going to be to the tune of around $3,000. Um, we were originally kind of going to do it in-house since I have a diesel mechanic, and then we decided that that wasn't going to work. So we took the parts to Fisher and had that done. It was actually uh front and backs and brokers in the whole nine yards um, for three grand only i thought it was a lot of money but but i probably not really on the grand scheme of things but you know at that same time medic 82 is out of service it's a hairy hairy thing um more of an fyi this is probably be more to, to chris than anything else the domestic water pump is being a little flaky so i'm going to be calling them tomorrow You'll remember it's got two pumps and it alternates between the two. Well, the first pump number one hasn't been working and pump number two shut down today and we were getting hot water, or still getting hot water actually in all faucets. Really? On the cold side because the water heater tank is the highest thing in the building yeah, basically. Sure. So yeah, um, and they come out of Cincinnati. So hopefully they can, we'll, we'll see, fingers crossed. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, let me, we'll skip the life pack part to start with. Uh, striker Cotman Pricement update. Just for that, I'm waiting for the $40,000 to come in from the grant before I make a formal proposal to ask for our contribution to that. Um, I enrolled in the SHRM Essentials for HR course uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm also going to call Buckeye Generator and have them come PM our generator. Um, and may look at seeing what we need to do as far as the service contract goes with that. Because, um, you know, it runs an hour every week, hasn't had oil change since then, which is okay because it, it, it gets tested before they change it, just like our engines do. Um, so just, so, just some, some uh, PM maintenance on that. Um, I'm going to request that we finance a life pack 35 I talked about in the last meeting um, that you know we got put in a really rough spot where we have to take one one is no longer repairable of the life pack 15s if it goes out of service um, physio control is really grateful for us being willing to purchase their product that they're happy to finance it for $19,166 and 59 cents in three annual payments. Uh, that gives us a $2,500 trade-in, which brings the price down to $52,797.20 total if we bought it outright. Um, the budget can't handle that. I'm, I'll figure the 19,000 out because it's just, quite frankly, it's not an option. Um, as I explained in the last meeting, this, this came up because there are multiple versions of our life pack and ours is at, our version is at end of life. Um, so I guess I need a, uh, an emotion to approve that purchase. I did apply, I forgot to mention, there are a couple other pieces of document that just show the breakdown of the numbers that's behind my report part. Um, Outside of that, that's all. Well, that's all I have for report wise. Anyone want to move to authorize purchase of Life Pack 35 uh, on the three year annual payment plan? So moved. I'll second. Roughly, it's fifty-seven thousand versus fifty-two thousand. Yep. Um, Sorry, I forgot to include that that way. Um, so the the motion is to uh, buy Life Pack Thirty Five uh, from Striker 
on the three annual payments of $19,166.59 each year. Any other discussion? Right. Um, it just occurs to me, Chris and I, I think you were there, we attended a um, oh, really impressive at a conference, the Township Association Conference. Remember the woman who talked to us about lease purchase and large equipment and stuff, and they always, um, they were, every example they gave, they went and met with a, an entity and said, oh, you need that? Well, what else do you need? Well, if you get this, this, and this at the same time, we can give you like this creative, you know, cost saving thing. I don't think this is a situation. This is a defibrillator. Yeah. So I don't I think would. this is a situation where we can stop and wait and take a more holistic view of how we finance everything. But, um, but we could do that for, for the second one. Yeah. Depending on what we do. Or with if, it, do you, I, you may not know this and it's not important. If, um, is there a chance to pay it off early if we get a better yes, finances? Yes, we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Yep. But yeah, get it right away. It's a defibrillator. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, just as an FYI, I'll send you an email about this, but I'm uh, I'm going to take Friday off from looking at how much I still have to use. You want to stay on this topic? Oh, I'm so sorry. You, you yeah. should have smacked me. I was ready to. <laughs> <laughs> I just smacked her. I get sidetracked and she tries to. Remember. What do you call her old it's please? Been, it's been moved and seconded to approve payment uh, of to approve purchase of a Lap Pack 35 from Stryker. Three annual payments of $19,166.59. Motion. Yes. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion to approve. Now, now I can say. <laughs> You'd think I'd be used to that. Um, I was going to take Friday off because um, obviously I have a lot of P or not PTO time, but vacation time to use up still. Um, I might do Monday. Um, some of you are aware I'm in a in a uh, low back pain study. And I'm going to go have that procedure done on Monday. Um, so I'll I'll keep you posted on that. I don't I don't think it'll be a problem, but I'll let you know. That's all I have. Any other questions? Fire chief. Fireworks were fun. Touch a truck was fun, and the care flight was fun. Yeah, everybody, even the even the uh, non children children like <laughs> it's pretty cool to see it land. Ooh. Yeah, it is really cool. So the care flight landing was part of Touch a Truck. Yep. Yeah, they they were late. They had two different calls um, for the aircraft, so they ended up arriving a little late. And then the fireworks guys were pretty cool about actually delaying the fireworks a little bit so, to get it done. It was cool to see it lift off too. Yeah. It's alarming when you see the wheels stuck in the ground and you lift off and you're like, oh, <laughs> that <laughs> times too. You're on site. Oops. The pilots actually like it. They just get to rev the engine some more. <laughs> <laughs> Cemetery report. Okay. Since the last meeting, we've had two burials. We had a burial in the Oak Grove, not a tree space. And we had ashes in the old part of the Cliff uh, Dudley Forest Cemetery. Today, they fit, they've done our paving in the cemetery today. Done a real nice job. Which will be, <clears throat> should be good to go for a while, and that's the end of our road work for the year. So, this was paving in Glen Forest? Glen Forest Cemetery, yes, sir. They filled the curve okay or something? Filled the curve, yeah. But down by the maple tree, they did. We'll, we'll do something down there sometime by the bench. Yeah. And we'll, we'll do something by that. Yeah. Something I never did. They grind the bomb? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's real nice. It's still tied off, you can't drive on it. But yeah. Yeah, it's real nice, they've done a nice job. Um, Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to do the gravel. All right. In Oak Grove. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon, he'll be mowing Clifton. So I've lined up. Are we rolling that first or just put it on? I'm going to run the roller over what's there uh -huh. and scrape the prairie mm -hmm, right. section now again and, and then we'll roll everything down over there. Mm -hmm. So I have not been out there. This is a new road that hasn't been gravel at all before. It's got the base down there. Base, so base gravel. On it, and it should be good to go for a while. It'll be a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have to answer it. Uh, but that's all I have. Cemetery. Road report? Uh, Brandon will finish trimming 
South River Road in the morning and we'll be done with the trim. Who did you trim today? Uh, Kyle. Part of South and then he went and done Kyle. He's just got an hour and a half on South River finish. And then he'll go move the clip and start moving. Sometime when he or you has a chance, would you inspect to see that Grinnell Circle needs a whole lot of trimming? Oh, it probably does need trimming. <laughs> Those Grinnell Circle needs to be trimmed. I'm just wondering if anybody's done that. I missed it. I missed it. There are definitely parts of Grinnell Circle where if a heavy yeah, truck, I, I if a heavy truck went on it, it would squish the My asphalt. Bad. I got ahead of myself. Okay. Well, I'm going to vote for next year at get some sort of treatment. So other than that, that's all I have. Now I'm going to trim the right trim the real circle too. <laughs> uh, I made a quick trip to the roads. I thought everything, plus or minus, looked really nice. Um, had, that's an awful lot of work, and you know, and you can tell where you started <laughs> because it's, it's, getting, it's getting longer. Well, a couple of weeks we'll yeah. start it in. <laughs> it's and start the third round. Yeah. It'll be a third. Try to get four rounds a year. Uh, you lucked out with a little dry weather though. It slowed it down just I know, in touch. Help, so. That's it. Can I just say something? Sure. There will be some couple guys out there this week. Yeah. Yeah, 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 talk to yeah, they'll be removing goldenrod. I wonder, I talked to a guy today, he's gonna be up there and he's gonna meet me up there tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got some ideas this on how the prairie. Yeah. He said he's done some work, I didn't ask what kind. But. Yeah, well, I'm meeting there in the morning sometimes. Remove a little bit invasive and they did kind of create a method of narrowing the paths again. He's got some ideas, so yeah. I think you were that's right, you were out for a, with your injury when we made the discovery that our ten foot paths that were originally made are in some places now fourteen and one place even sixteen, so it took us 10 years to, to expand our path that much. We're going to try to bring it back. Well, that's the original path, is that why? The original area laid out is, is the width, that width, not just 10 foot. Because hmm. the grades actually start four foot off the edge of what 10 foot wide path is there. Well, we better. Because um, there's hits, it's stones are sitting, we want? all the stones are sitting around so you can see the stone. That's why they're close. They'd have to be moved if you. Yeah, we have to okay. go through it. Okay, okay, well, we'll, get we'll work. We'll work. Okay. Okay. You, you guys can work it out. Okay. Anything else? Well, for an awful lot of stone moving too. Yeah. Or cemetery or roads. Can I say something? Sure. Um, I don't know, Marilyn, if you shared this, but you know, we were told at a recent. Uh, uh, service that it was all like sold out or whatever you know that like all the land was uh yeah uh, spoken for and so so anyway so i think that's not true that's not and true. so in which particular session brian section uh well it was when uh, we had um what was uh, it was uh, Susan's service? Mm -hmm. Somebody mentioned that like yeah, yeah. there were so he was in there were no spots, spots left or whatever. No, no. And so yeah. a lot, but there's there's still quite a few. Yeah. So anyway, so I just wanted to make sure you know that was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah disused or whatever. So yeah. anyway, Thank you. so yeah. This is your chance to plug the Oak Grove. Yeah, we've got, you know, we've got 500, <laughs> we've got 500 spaces. I know, I'm, I'm trying to get my spot there, too, yeah, so, yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Did you bring your checkbook? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got it in my car, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dan, real quick, on um, Larkins. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, towards the Cedarville mm -hmm. side. Are there two home sites being put up? I think so. There are two entrances. One, there is a home. They, they built a building and then they set a prefab home in there. I think it's in there already. Yeah, that's what I thought. And going down, there's another entrance 
I'm not sure if that's for a house or just an entrance, but they've got a permit for both of them. Yeah. They do? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I just want to yeah, I talked to her. Um, I talked to her a couple of times. Yeah. Let's see. One is ready, the other is not. It's setting. I just talked to her last week. I didn't see want to know about it. Towards she had a lower. Okay. Yeah. They, I, they're going to be building. Okay. okay. The whole family split mm -hmm. up the farm. They're all building. So. It just seemed like the driveway cover was a little high. Yeah, yeah, that's what we I talked to her last week and I said you have to lower it and I want them to go out a little bit on each side of it for drainage. I never see water there, but you know, to make it lower so they can go over it with some cover. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just talked to her last week about that. Yeah. We're good. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Hey. Okay. The school officer you know. Okay. Um Folks, I'm trying to catch up on bill pay, and it's been one week longer since you all met three weeks instead of the normal two, so, and we had some big bills come in, which is why it's um, a little higher. Um, but I did uh, update the uh, account. I don't have it from Star Bank. I haven't gotten their bill yet for the end of July, so that's still June's figure, but um, that's the updated one for US Bank for the end of July. And Chris had mentioned maybe moving um, some over to Star Bank so that it's getting some, some interest no. instead of just Star Fund, I, just Star, to be sure. Yes, oh, sorry. Yeah, I Star Bank. Yeah. Star, Star Fund is a state overseen mutual fund. Mm -hmm. Yes, that instead of uh, just bank. So um, I'll uh, look into transferring that to so capitalizing what we have in there. Um, employee, I guess I have a question about the paper files. Um, what is in storage at this hut we'll talk about? <laughs> that, uh, all your history, my dear. All your history. But so, so are all the empl like employee files, yep. for example, mm -hmm. those are all there? Because I, when I was going to file, like, Carrie's and mine were the newest. I assume Denny has all his firefighting ones, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but our, no. our old ones are out there, too. Okay. But our files, employee files, are in the bottom of the seat, in the drawer. Okay. At the bottom of the state. Okay. Now, I'd like to say they were our current employees, but it goes back probably 30, 40, 40 50 years worth of employees. <laughs> we don't have that many employees, you know, it's not much turnaround, but so that most of those people are still there. Called a bit. Okay, great. That is good to know. Um, because also, as far as when the auditor needed stuff, there were some things, you know, that I was trying to find paper files of. I didn't know if it's stuff the auditor already had. I didn't know if it was at the hut. I didn't know, you know, so just wanting to know where some of the old okay. just to ask. files we, are. We can yeah. Maybe at some point I should take a look out there. So yeah, I, you should. I know what yeah, this looks like. You'll eventually spend some quality time out there. <laughs> <laughs> Is it air conditioned? All right, maybe it'll fall. It's not heated either. Well, <laughs> Actually, Dan and I discovered when I was up there that, that your oil heater was dripping a lot of oil. I replaced it last year. Well, you have to replace it again. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. It was still on when we did it. It was still there. on, and the, the hot, there's hot oil on the table, so we almost lost yeah. all records. Not we cleaned it up, but you do have to we get it. Can I leave the room for a minute, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hazard. It's plausible than I have No kidding. So anyway, it's not heated, but... You could October be a good month. Oh, okay, somewhere in between. Okay. Yeah, I just want to get a feel for where some of the problems. And then just at some point we should update the website because it still has, and even just there was somebody who I think we tried to eat. Just so that it's easier for people to contact me. The ongoing thing with the voicemail and then also like so that my email is on the website. Oh, your it's still not it's still not my picture, it's the old Echo's picture and bio and the Gina's picture. Most importantly, they can my email so that people know how to reach out to me on the website. And some other things. And there's a multiple things. Yeah, yeah. which an update Don. So we're at his picture turning on there, too. You'll have to yeah. sit still and let me take one. Well, we, we no, got, got the got one at the conference. Some, so we're, yeah, we'll just have to take a little bit. Um, that's all I can think of for now. Okay. So, can I say something else? I never come to you guys, your meetings or whatever, but. Um, Gina, I think uh, it would be great if you connected with our finance director, Michelle Robinson, about Star Ohio, um, just because Village has had a lot of success 
about you know kind of figuring out how to shift our investments um, to take advantage of that opportunity because you can download those funds in a day. So anyway, okay. yeah. So okay. I, mean, I think that would help with your learning curve. Okay. So. Got out for Michelle. All right, thank yeah. you. <laughs> so we give you a percentage of what? <laughs> <laughs> None of that. I just figured since I'm here, I should uh, you know share some knowledge. But yeah. Great. Any other finance questions? Hello. Zoning and <laughs> I think at the a last little while longer. Yeah, yeah. The, I think at the last meeting I was at, I told you all I wouldn't be here because I was a week off. I thought this week was the fair, but oh. here I am. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Um, okay, so I think you have the um, zoning commission case, um, the text amendment case 2024-001T on the small solar, um, yes, so. I do not. Do you have it? No. Do, you, do you have a copy of it? I do. Great. May I pass it? I emailed it. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, I missed it. That's okay. So at the, yes, at their meeting, they, uh, um, sorry, I was looking to see. Oh, here we go. I have my file at the meeting on um, July 16th they um, passed to recommend this to you I will actually if you'd like I can just give you this whole folder do you, do you want it okay. this is just all of the um, all the paperwork probably some unnecessaries the resolution uh, and the actual text mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they, they yeah, okay. there you go. So they, they were just, yeah, they recommended that you adopt that as written. Um, so you'll need to hold your public hearing um, within the next 20 to 40 days. Well, well, let's, just repeat, let's just repeat this, this has okay. to do with <clears throat> July 16th. Okay. Small solar parenthesis self-generation on-site for consumption on-site mm -hmm. correct and this is in the agricultural zone or uh, or all I think it's all it says agriculture r1a r1b there you go okay each of those districts that's permitted in. so we have a hearing and then we vote mm -hmm. and then at your hearing if you choose you can adopt it deny it or modify it and then it would be an effect if you deny it of course it'd be effective immediately um if you choose to adopt it or modify it it would be um, effective 30 days after your hearing and does this qualify for an emergency resolution i don't think so there's no no urgency, is it? No. I just I'm trying to figure out what you know. Yeah. So what our next meeting would be yeah. the nineteenth. We could have yeah. what emergency resolutions were. So I'm well, I don't. Kind of not this. Every resolution is not effective for thirty days. Every one that you pass, unless it's an emergency. Oh, okay. And then it's effective immediately. Okay. But you have to put a reason why it's an emergency on the gotcha. resolution. I don't know. That would be a good attorney question. Um, <laughs> but um, oh, if we that have it goes back to I'm sorry, if it goes back to if we if we prove it, 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 it stops here. If we modify it, goes back to. You can modify it. Oh. No, you don't. You just do it. Yeah. And if you want to modify anything, you guys can modify it and approve it in the same night. Okay. And you I've said. never had anyone, and I've asked this a million times to all those own people I can find. I've never had anybody who can give me a good answer as to how much you can modify. Mm 
Yeah, right. I'd say you could modify the whole thing. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> What's the turn? Yeah. <laughs> Likely there's a little bit of case and sign your name at the bottom. <laughs> three acres, we'll change that to 3,000 acres. And <laughs> set back. And make sure it has your name on it. Five, eight, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and you'll need to, I think Marilyn and I have already talked about this, but you'll need to public, uh, put a public notice in the paper. Or I think the news is still for the hearing. I'm going to vote tomorrow morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. it would. Um, the next week. And then um, the only other thing I have, oh, of course my computer just died. So I've given one permit for um, a deck. I'm working on another one for a house on Clifton Road, barn dominium. <laughs> nice. So we'll hmm. see. I want a barn dominium. But that's I essentially their homes. I think when it when it comes to barn dominium, I think that just there's some differences for that the building department looks at. Um, I yeah. heard it here first. I've never heard of the barn dominion. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, then you haven't been around zoning long enough. <laughs> They're the new hot thing. And it's essentially just a house that looks like a barn okay, cool. on a slab. It's a slab house. How about that? So. Sounds great. Yeah. So we have that. Um, and then we have the three cases uh, coming up for the BZA on August 21st. Um, we have a variance request on 343 for um, a home with, um, I forget the number of acres, 21 acres. Um, they want to build, it, what they want to, they want to build, there's a pond on the property, they want to build a little cabin home type thing and two smaller very small cabins for family. This will be their vacation spot. So essentially three homes on one property. I, I, I told them initially that, you know, we're one, one dwelling per parcel, but they could combine it and have, you know, sort of like the main house here, little one here, if they're all attached, um, but they wanted to go this route, so. Um, so that will be heard on August 21st. And then we have two um, agritourism requests, one for um, the sunflowers um, and the other for Stony Creek Garden Center right across the road from the sunflowers oh. for, to hold gardening classes. I think both very simple, easy, and appropriate requests mm -hmm. for agritourism. The 343 project, it, it, will they have um, water, septic, uh, um, electricity? Well, yeah. You mean for each home? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't do that. <laughs> I, one home per parcel. What's I the, know. Do I, you, I, you I, want to be appointed to the BZA? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I have a quick shy. We're about to be yeah. full yeah. with alternates. Yeah. 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 They are fairly small. I was trying to look to see if we said how small. So, yeah, the primary residence would be 1,600 square feet. And then the two smaller ones, uh, they want just 500 square feet each. On one parcel. On one parcel. So, honestly, that, that that's going to be sort of second part to this variance because we have a minimum square footage. That's true. Yeah, that's the second part. But that's a whole nother. Is there a main home on the 21 acres? Or there was, it? was, but they it was uh, originally more than 21 acres. They are splitting it. Mm -hmm. They're splitting the existing home off with three acres. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of road frontage. So they're splitting. Um, but this, the, the road frontage doesn't, doesn't affect this project. Mm -hmm. There's plenty what's, of road frontage to split both. What's the original home? address? Um, it is 2368, State Route 343. So theoretically, they're okay for the main house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just these yes. two little big Correct. houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
They're yes. putting, in a, putting in a new driveway. Or are they going to use the existing driveway? I believe they're going to use the existing driveway. We're not that far yet, though. Um, yeah. Uh, no, actually, they are going to put in a new driveway. But we're not there yet. <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> um, I'm, you know, I don't know. We'll see. So I'd like to say congratulations on your new job. Thanks. You're starting today? Um, actually, I started two weeks ago. Oh, shoot. And then I took off a little time for the fair. And then, yeah. Um, yeah. So this hearing on the 21st. Yeah. I know you, I don't want to, I know you said you'd help us as long as we I would. Can. We're, yes. Um, so I imagine because of the nature of these questions that there, we either need you or I could find somebody else with more zoning yeah. knowledge than I have to answer the questions for the BZA. Yes. Um, so I, I thought it would be no problem, but my new job, there's actually a meeting that evening. Okay. Yes. Of course. Um, it is just at 6 o'clock and this is at 7. So, okay. Um, Oh, do yeah, I know, right? Can I teleport? Well, maybe we have our attorney come. So, yeah, yeah, she could really answer those questions. Um, yes. Yeah, we'll yes. Or another um, option I don't know. Um, I, I think I might have mentioned to you. I don't know. You thought about <clears throat> hiring or oh, yes. contracting with regional planning. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, that I, right. I was talking to um, Deandra, and she said, you know, would they want to contract with us for a while? Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know that. So those are some options. This cool. is cool. not. So we're you're, now we are not talking about that night. You're talking about replacing you. Yeah, but that night as well. Yeah, I mean, or yeah, <laughs> or that night as well. Okay. I meant for the interim while we're... Yeah, sorry. I, no, I mean, I'm not... I know. <laughs> that is, I'm not understanding. That we would have the option of contracting with Green County Regional Planning Commission. Yes, yeah, so or we... Or staffing our... We used to do that in Spring Valley years ago. function. One of the planners. So, Taylor, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it was a different planner who worked in regional planning's office, contracted in Spring Valley as our zoning inspector for a short time when we needed um, help. Um, anything that just came through the office, everybody else needed. Okay. I think that, I and mean, that's what it seemed like. You could ask them for sure, but yeah. Well, we have, we've had discussions. Okay. Okay. There, there's this week. There's a lot of things, the decisions that are being made about personnel, hiring positions that are being hired for, that sort of thing. Amount of time, you know, all those things are going to happen this week. Okay. Yeah. So I will, I mean, I'll do my best. I can't, I, I don't know how to get here to no, no, we appreciate no, it. We will no, no, take care no, of it. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. I, I apologize. Uh, I, I, when I no, scheduled no. this and did the posting, it would, it all worked out beautifully. Um, Deandra's well versed at it. Uh, we can get this to our, our, okay. our legal staff uh, okay. well before it. And it's, it's not a 20 page you know, document. So. And the. Um, Which you can handle. The, the home site, mm -hmm. two additional little homes. The gentleman I have to work with is um, an engineer, and this is not his first time doing something like this, so he's also very Good. knowledgeable about the whole process. Um, mm -hmm. He's been really great to work with, so I don't imagine there would be a lot of difficult questions. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, I think that's all I have. Any questions for me? I'll make a note to take your name off the website. No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, don't be. No. Stop the phone, but I was thrilled when I heard you make a position. Yep, yeah. okay. That's all I had. Well, I guess I could speak for the board and thank you very much for your long and. Uh, I'm sorry, it was so short. Long in service. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to work on a gold watch or something. Oh, okay. <laughs>
There were a lot, a lot of things to handle in that little bit of time. There really was. I think I've still got all that retirement. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I wish there was retirement. <laughs> if only. So what is your official new title? Um, building and Zoning Manager. Or Clinton or County. County. Oh, yeah. Nice. They're unique and they have a countywide zoning um, for all the townships. They actually have two townships that are unzoned. Um, and then they, they're, they're too small to have their own building department, so they contract with Warren County. Oof. So my office wow. just um, schedules that with those building inspectors. So everyone comes into our office to get zoning permits or building permits, and we handle the zoning permits and schedule building inspections. Hmm. Yeah, it's like a nice so small far. little county. So far you like it? I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the commute time? Um, 24 minutes. Really? <laughs> yeah, okay, not think, much difference than the point. Much as I would like to have more conversation, I think we're, we're wandering from business. Yeah. Well, excuse me. It happens. <laughs> Okay. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Don't read the. You. Okay. No need to stay. Oh, I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll stay. Um, okay. So, anything else from the zoning inspector? Nope. Oh, I, have, have. I do have files ready, though. I guess I should have said for each of those meetings on August 21st. Great. Okay. Everything's here. Cessna. And, and the postings have been made in the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're ready to go. You're right on top of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Brian, you don't have anything to add to, to this report? Any other questions? <laughs> 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 I'm just asking. Wait a minute, you're not the chair. <laughs> I'm trying to control myself. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can argue whether YSDC is new or old business. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead with the topic of sure. so YSDC's June, request for Yeah, in June, Brian and Lisa came before this group and presented a request for funding for this part-time uh, executive director position. Uh, then went back, regrouped, Pulled together some data. I came in the interim without all the data ready. It wasn't ready yet. Um, at this point, you should have all the requests fulfilled. Um, the village has gone through the voting process and approved um, a line item for funding for that position. And we've got the position posted. We're now collecting resumes, evaluating resumes, and then we'll be working on that um, as a board. Next week? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. For the, for the video, would you, how much did the village? Uh, 40000 And 40, um, hopefully you guys saw the resolution that we uh, included in the documents. We got uh, 54 applications. Wow. And uh, tomorrow we're going to evaluate eight. Um, that we shortlisted, um, which uh, I think I'm okay saying, like, Colin Altman is one of those uh, mm -hmm. applications. So uh, he had applied for the job with the village, and uh, I was really excited to see that he's <laughs> back on the market. Um, but pretty impressive uh, group that have applied. So, so, so he's back from Europe? Yes, and apparently, like, bored, so. <laughs> Make some volunteer so, yeah. positions available. Yeah. <laughs> See, firehouse. Yeah, well, well, this is a part-time position, so yep. there'll be uh, plenty of uh, volunteer time as well, so. But we are going through a process of evaluation. Yes. With all personal details redacted. <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> we had brief discussion of this before and in that uh, in that meeting or subsequently um, Chris asked a series of questions and uh, Marilyn had made a motion uh, that we give 
10,000. And <coughs> I, I can't remember, did we technically did we table it or? I can give you the, uh, we made a motion that we, um, we made a motion that we um, contribute. Right. No dollar amount in that motion. And the, requ the request was for 20,000, but yeah. So, Chris, mm -hmm. you have you read the answers? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, what would you like to say? If I could just have a couple of minutes, um, sure. and uh, Corey, I appreciate all the work that went into getting that information for us. It was uh, it was quite complete, and uh, um, there was just a little bit. There was nothing. There was no uh, breakdown of 2019. Okay. Uh, I just was wondering, you know, I, I, the notice start up started money from the village, but I didn't know if we put any in there or not. But it doesn't doesn't really matter. I was just trying to. Read. Oh, like a kind of a snapshot of the founding. Yeah. In financial terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's fine. I mean, I got a little bit from it from tw 2020, where I said what you know how much was brought over from seven from 19, but I wasn't sure where that money came from. Anyway, um, well, and just to say, 2019. We were formally uh, put together like mid-year in 2019, so we didn't start the dues until 2020. Mm -hmm. So that was part of why there wasn't like really any financial information for 2019. So it was June of 2019 that the YSDC became more formal. I mean, we had some meetings before that, but yeah. And Chris yeah, was I part of that. I remember. Yeah, you, oh yeah, you yeah. I was, there. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> you were. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we looked for yeah, but we didn't see any like financials from 2019. So. Well, if okay. Well, then let me back up just yeah. a second. Um, I'm, I didn't have pages, but I guess it would be the first page. Uh, it says investor investment of ninety eight thousand dollars. It was recently approved forty thousand for this is the village. Uh, Nineteen thousand startup donation. Well, that's great. What page are we looking at? Who gave it? First page. Go ahead and hand it out. That's the, the village of Springs gave it nineteen thousand startup. I this is a long time ago, but I thought we gave a small amount for a startup, but it doesn't matter. I'm just. I didn't try and figure out. I didn't have any of the 19 records, so I, I didn't know. I, I knew we probably didn't start dues yet, but the other two I wasn't sure about. The other piece of it, too, is we've been um, kind of tracing down the, the line here for the separate funding request, uh, request of us for funding, but for the revolving loan fund, which is another piece of the puzzle, too. Right, right. But that 19,000 came in 2020 when the village passed that resolution to say um, the YSDC would be our economic development arm. Okay, well that, that makes it even more interesting because yeah. on their, their 1040 form or whatever they uh, supplied to the IRS, it says this was for 2020, but there's a form that said what their prior year assets were coming into 2020, the prior year assets were 17,000. So hmm. under where that 17,000 came from, if it wasn't your 19,000, or, you yeah. know, hmm. But it, that was just, you know, just a you know, little thing. Um, two things, I guess, still on that. Uh, the, I'm really confused a little on the Department of Energy, the, the solar grant. Mm -hmm. I think when Lisa was here, she said that was unrestricted. Yes. If it's unrestricted, why don't you use that money to, to pay for this uh, interim, our, our new part-time director? Yeah, that, that is an option for us if, if we can't secure the funding other ways. Okay, so you, it's you, always you, have an access, option. you do have access to that money? We have access to that money, okay. yeah. Is that money at this point earmarked for anything particular? For the project for which it was applied. Yeah. So we have already applied for that second round of funding, mm -hmm. and the intention there is to essentially maximize our dollars towards building community solar as intended. 
So if, I think as we've talked about, if it comes to a need to tap that fund in order to maintain this position, then we would, we would desire as a group to uh, also set some benchmarks for working towards completion of solar mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. I did notice and I did ask, I did request, you know, the amounts that were committed from the different political subdivisions and for any individual um, donations that were made. And it didn't look like there were any addition, there were any individual donations made over the course of the YSTC's history. So there were a couple of donations that were, well, I, I guess I'm just focused in on the, y, the um, revolving loan fund. There was a, there was a, the community foundation during COVID had a, some kind of a QR code thing that you would donate money towards a fund. Then they split off some amount of that and shunted it over into the revolving loan fund at the time, which was then dispersed out to the businesses as forgivable loans um, in two rounds. The second round in which the, the township also contributed funds towards replenishing it and then widening the lens so that we were um, bringing in more township specific businesses towards that. But are you asking about like cap like a capital campaign from uh, us as far as like writing just the, grants or just the, f the four years that you know that you've been in operation um, you know has, has anybody put you know five thousand dollars in it or anybody put ten thousand or anybody put Fifty dollars. I mean, I didn't see a list of individual. Yeah, I did not. I was not able to find that either, and I was looking for it as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't see it in any of the the audits or the, mm -hmm. the tax records. So I just want to be sure. Of the well, and I do want to mention, you know, so basically the contributors have been the village, the township, the community foundation, and then uh, dues. The dues. Um, but we did learn today that. Um, 5,000 that was uh, dedicated for, um, and I think it was mentioned in there, the Mills Lawn evaluation yeah, right. was shifted to um, evaluating the Antioch College sites, which, you know, we've recently learned as, you know, led to uh, what looks like uh, a bunch of apartments and other things. So. So there was some money that wasn't used for Mills Lawn that was shifted to um, Antioch College development. So, but otherwise, yeah, there haven't been any like individual donors or anything mm -hmm. like that. So, we also haven't asked, oh. and I, I think part of it is that we haven't had a project where we say, okay, here we go all green lights and now we we can go to the community or go to the big donors and say this yes no we need this much let's go capital campaign mm -hmm. so in a way we still have that in our pocket because we have enough uh turned and burn those relationships you've got Miami township listed at 13.5 10 000 for forgivable loan fund donation and annual dues I just, <laughs> I mean, I kind of, kind of, sort of spearheaded that forgivable loan. We called it, uh, I think we called it something rescue. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we obviously we received the mon money from the government to disperse for, for that purpose. And I spent a lot of time calling different philanthropic organizations to see whether that was something that they did. And I finally got down to uh, Ms. Jennings at the police department, who was who was taking over that role uh, at the time, and I made those arrangements with her, and we sent the money to her. Now, what she did with it, I, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, I trusted her with the money. I just assumed that she had some plan on how to distribute it, and again, you know, we weren't going to make the decision of who it went to or 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 what criteria was that it went to. I, I, we left it all up to her, uh, and as far as I know, she did a wonderful job. But 
I had no idea any of this money was going into the development fund. I, I'm not sure if this is the same money. Because I was just, there was money that you brought into the organization from the township when we did the second round of revolving loans. I think we had maybe 12,000 left to work with after the first round. And then you brought in another 10, bumped it up, and then we gave away most of that. That I don't remember. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you're if you have two COVID stacks of money that you distributed. I thought we did, mm -hmm. and I thought I distributed both of them to Ms. Jennings. Hmm. Uh, I have no recollection of any Yellow Spring development. Yeah, so I mean, you, we, you, we have a process. Do you mean Flores? Yes. Okay. Florence Randall. Oh. Yeah, Randall. Oh, Randall. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Rand last name. Um, we, yeah. We have pretty meticulous records of the uh, applications coming in, the notices that went out, uh, the, uh, you know, we, we had profit and losses for everybody, the credit union administered the distribution of those loans, and then the forgiveness, they had to meet specific criteria in order to qualify for forgiveness, which I think ev almost everybody did, and finally everybody did. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, we, we have a pretty robust process for that. And that was 14 businesses that benefited from the, you know, forgivable loan program. You yeah, know, we call we, it a rescue fund, not, not yeah, we got the, loan. We, got we never even thought with, about it being a loan. Was that CARES Act money? Yeah. Yeah. We got to follow up with Florence, though, like, yeah. I, I mean, because there might have been another disbursement. Yeah, I don't remember made. anything coming from Florence to the DC. Yeah, I thought what Florence handled was to individuals, mm -hmm. families that were burdened. That, that may be the case, and I do remember now that we did fund one Miami Township business in Clifton. Yes. Um, for some amount. And, and again, I, I just don't think that went through Community Foundation or all YSDC or I thought it went similar to the credit, you know, when it was a, I have those applications. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to keep it clear in my sure. head because uh, I don't consider that economic development. I consider that economic supplement or or rescue. You know, in, in bad times, it you know it's, it didn't bring any new jobs or new taxes or or, or new people into town. It just helped what we had during a, a very us. critical you know Save part of this time for our economy. And I just you know it, it bothers me to see all this money that you're that you're putting in this report that like. You went out and got it. Well, for us anyway, we searched out somebody to give it to. Oh uh, gosh, we're just reporting on, we were, on we were what the money being, was we were not and where being, you know, not being approached for it. fulfilling your request for a, sort of a listing of, of line items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it comes with any kind of uh, emotional baggage of any kind, except it's just a, a reporting of what happened. There. Yeah, I also just quickly want to add like. It was hard to figure out like what a contribution, you know. So again, like we recorded it as an investment, but we were trying to think about like you know what that looks like. But I want to say, Chris, I appreciate that uh, the township decided to work with the YSDC on the you know fire station sale, and uh, you know I know there are different thoughts about that, but I think the. Uh, the process was good. I think you know somebody had to negotiate that deal, and um, you know so that was part of where you know we were trying to figure out like what's a contribution. So again, we found like the village did like say all right, nineteen thousand for startup costs to like get it established. But um, I think there have been a lot of contributions that have been like really good for you know just moving the organization forward. So, so I appreciate that the township has been involved. Well, and in particular, when I found that ten thousand for the revolving loan fund, I was like, wow, that that was cool. Like that was not that was not like on the radar as clear as it should have been. So you guys have been really great contributors. So. 
I find it interesting, Brian and, and Corey, that in the, the, the whole document, Miami Township isn't uh, mentioned once as a contributor because of the firehouse contribution. You know, you would think that us giving you or selling you that building for a dollar uh, and then allowing you to market it and giving you an 8% commission, whereas a, 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 a seller's commission would be 3%, and you're get, you got 8%, you got $35,000 for that. Um, in addition to the different expenses, and we, you know, I beat this dead horse, but in addition to the different expenses, like the utilities that you never shut off and the survey that you never paid for and the, uh, the radon that had to be, uh, rec uh, whatever that's called, uh, but anyway, but, but nothing in here says, you know, even, even in the contribution section, it doesn't, it doesn't list $50,000 that we, you know, in effect, put into the pot. I mean, we could have done that ourselves. We, we didn't have to have anybody else do it. I mean, you could have done it. You could have done it through um, any of the local realtors, uh, but you decided not to use the realtors. You're, you put tremendous amount of money into lawyers for this for this project. I mean, it was like $8,000 worth of legal fees for this, and I don't know what else went into it. But the, the point was, it just, it just irks me that, you know, Miami Township was never mentioned in this document as to contributing Fifty thousand dollars to to the to YSDC. So there is a section that talks about the fire station sale, which you know has added a lot of you know the section, Brian. That says, I mean, it's prior to etc. etc. Et it says such as the sale of the former fire station. Doesn't say anything about Miami Township. YSDC created a process to choose a buyer that involved eight criteria, highlighting community values to ensure positive outcome for our residents, stimulating downtown, stimulating downtown businesses. What got stimulated? And achieving a multiplier effect, I don't understand that having to do with Firehouse, on our local economy, on, on many of the other ROI related results. So, and then in the ROI section, we talk about. Um, what you know is being contributed property tax wise i think the other piece that's important to highlight here is that um a realtor would have charged six percent um no and they charge three percent there's a buyer and a seller well, i don't know like six percent is what we're paying with the cbe so um so i don't know maybe that's different um, I know there were at least 15,000 in legal costs that were part of what the YSDC absorbed. Uh, there was no $15,000 reported in any of your audits. Where's the 15,000? I mean, you know, we could dig into it for sure. Well, I dug it. I thought you said 8,000. But what I'm hearing is that it, it sounds like- I'm sorry, 6,000. There's more of a, that it's more important that there's a desire for the township as an entity to be recognized as really a foundational, you know, contributing, well, it has you know, important, exactly, yeah. and have that tied more to the Miami township's identity. It, that, <laughs> that you would like Miami township to have more credit in public and in, in these written documents for every part of, of the Miami Township's contributions to this group. Just as much as anyone else is, you know, is, is listed here. Um, mm -hmm. Community Foundation says $27,000. Uh, of course, you, we paid those, you paid those people back uh, $8,000 in fiscal, fiscal sponsor loans, $8,607. So you, you know, you got some from them and then you paid them some. So it was kind of, I mean, it wasn't a wash, but it was, you know, you were paying them. Uh, I, I don't want to take too much time. I'm sorry I, I'm to this point, but I think the last one I had was this ROI. On page, it doesn't have a page. Yeah, on which page has a second page, I guess? Or third. First. Second and third, third page. It's got the it's got the block with the. It says project Department of Energy, um, Community Solar Initiative, uh, taxes generated. Hard to estimate, but increased property values, more taxes, cost saving, mitigated levy costs, living budgets for residents. I, I don't see that generating anything. Pandemic forgivable loan program. 
you're taking credit for that uh, to increase uh, income tax and and revenues and support services for township residents. That I don't understand at all. In Byron's flight retention, you, you do admit that you lost $1,000 in property taxes because they left. Open for business marketing outreach campaign, sounds great, based on property tax revenues paid by Cresco, which you had nothing to do with, there's potential to double the current taxes generated, the potential, and possible income tax growth is substantial. Okay, but to, the, to this point, it would be zero. Various economic explorations with local properties and taxes generated for that is difficult to estimate it again, but several of these projects were large scale and could generate significant revenues highlighting tax lots, excuse me, lots of potentials and we are currently seeking. But to date, it looks like we're minus $1,000 on, on those. Just one point it out. And, you know, I, and we did get numbers about you know, what the fire station uh, sale generates. I guess the numbers I had were that we get 4.4% from property tax. I don't know if that's like an, still an accurate number. That's what Hostway had from three years ago. And, and I, so, I, hope, I, I hope you get a million dollars off of that. But the point is, to a certain extent, you, you may not have gotten anything had you not had control of the building to do with what you felt was best. We might have kept control of, over it and made it a warehouse for whatever reason. You know, mm -hmm. We weren't in the economic development business, but we wanted you guys to be in the economic development business. And so that's way, why we basically gave you the commission, the $35,000 commission, as a contribution. We didn't have to do that. We could have sold it ourselves. And I think it would have been relatively easy to sell it. Uh, as, as you probably know, and, you know, you weren't short on people who were interested in, in buying it. And it was, it wasn't, I mean, just, it wasn't an easy process. But what I'm wondering is what would fulfill that desire for getting enough credit or enough sort of, I, I guess I'm just wondering at what point we say um, this, every, you know, the parties are satisfied money is fungible and we're ready to look forward and make moves for the future mm -hmm. rather than to continue to sort of bring up the sure. kitchen sink of each time we you know we want to make a move i understand that i'm just trying to take a a good hard look at what's what's happened in the past four years you know speculating on what's going to happen in the next four years is fine and as being a politician you know we every four years we get up there and we speculate on what we're going to accomplish and you know chicken in every pot and that sort of deal mm -hmm. you know, it, it sounds good before it's done and after it's done there's a lot of reasons why or after it's not done there's a lot of reasons why it didn't get done I, i'm not looking for credit because the the horse has already left the barn that's you know it, it's too late for that i'm a little disappointed it never happened and you know, if we go forward in the future, I you know I, I hope our name is somewhere on there about making a contribution, or at least we have some kind of recognition for it. But the very, very, very last thing that, that, that I have to say is I just you know I was looking over all the different audits and, I, and put some of those numbers together, and I had mentioned about the fiscal sp sponsor, but it just I can't quite figure out. This is a this is a uh, an organization that that doesn't have real estate, that doesn't pay rent, that doesn't pay utilities, that doesn't pay employees, do, employees doesn't have the, uh, the medical expenses, and, and you know, all of those sorts of things, but you need, you need $9,850 for an accountant. Uh, not, what are, what are $9,080 in accounting, what are they accounting? Not to mention $2,500 in QuickBooks. If you've got a $9,000 accountant, why do you need the QuickBooks? Um, Hannah Montgomery seemed to be doing fine in the first first couple of years, and, and you really haven't gotten huge amount of monies or, 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 or lots of expenditures, a lot more expenditures in the fourth year than you had in, had in the first year. Kind so, of, sort of. Uh, is, is that number for the account for last year, or is that the total. total life mm -hmm. of work? Yeah, it came from your audits. Yeah, yeah. So mostly we, that. The, that audit had that do, we had last year. Right, and it also had to do with the fact that 
to make the transaction with the fire station happen happen. We had to, you know, basically absorb three hundred and eighty thousand and then, you know, push that back out. So that's I mean that's where Which had an effect that triggered that audit process because it looked like we were a big fish. The same with this hundred thousand dollar absorbing this prize. Mm -hmm. So we're set up to run on this little, you know, less than eighteen thousand dollars a year of dues in expenses out. The community foundation does not as of yet charge YSDC for sort of office services or they do. They do now. Yes. How much? And it's a percentage or uh, seven point five percent. It's 5%, but then it's less on the big prize money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when did that start? Don, it's been $8,607 since, since the beginning of the last Yeah. Okay. But that, yeah, that's basically for the fiscal sponsorship. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, I, I do think it's important to note that uh, the township uh, gained. Fifty thousand above the you know what was uh, apprised as the uh, value of the property, so it was you know appraised at three hundred thirty thousand, three hundred eighty thousand. That was the intention all along, Brian. You know that. Was that? That was the intention all along that there, it was going to be so. <clears throat> we we put that base low of what we expected to have back. But that was the county's appraisal. Well, for the property, so how we give me a break. <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, I feel like that's a win. And they were appraising the property because there was no taxes ever generated on it. Mm -hmm. That was that was done by that was done by a very shaky, uh, not county appraiser, a private appraiser because we tried really? to get somebody. But it was based on almost it was based on stuff there. Yeah, yeah, it was out of town comparables. Yeah, it was in Dayton or, or Beaver Creek or you know some places right. like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're going into the weeds. We are, and, I, and I'm sorry. I, I was never going to bring that up until Brian brought up about you know, how much more we gave them than we, you know than we expected. Right. Well, and, only because I want to acknowledge again that I appreciate because I was there, Chris, when you you know. Yeah. Help make that decision to like try to move the YSDC forward. So I I appreciate that we work together on that. And so I mean it's disappointing that it didn't work out as well as you wanted it to. But you know, but I, I feel like there are some positives. So I would say that my my ultimate goal though is to grow the YSDC so that in the future, we can all look back and say, okay, make sure the township has, you know, a, a, has their names attached to the contributions and the projects that we did together. But ultimately, you know, in the, in the rear view, I think all of our hope is that 40,000 will not be a significant amount for either of our organizations because we'll be turning, turning things, making moves, making money moves. So. A very last itty bitty little dig that I wanted to give you. Sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> Digs are hard. Right. You know Jeff you know Slater? No. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she made us virtually the perfect website for a Glen Forest Cemetery. Mm -hmm. I mean, tons of pictures, tons of, or some video, lots of drop downs, lots of color, lots of blocks, lots of this, lots of that. For fifteen hundred dollars total. I, 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 that's not how I remember. I remember being sixty-five hundred dollars. No, no, it was not sixty-five hundred dollars. But for the, the new one with the drums and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that was sixty-five hundred dollars. I, I, okay. Well, you, what? You know, you, Marilyn, you're always right. Now I'm serious. So. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> we paid sixty-five hundred, and you paid seven thousand for our website that I haven't seen yet. But it ought to be a hell of a website it's for there. seven thousand dollars. Pretty dry. It's got minutes on it. With that, I would make a motion to uh, contribute ten thousand dollars to the uh, to the fund, whatever they're calling the fund, the new director fund, interim director, temporary director. I'll second it. And we'll Would you like to say something? No, we'll, we'll take that out of the COVID fund, if that's all right. Yeah. 
that's a, a separate. Yes, thing. I understand that, but it's got to come from somewhere. So I'm just painting the whole picture. So the request was for 20. Mm -hmm. It's been moved that we contribute uh, 10, and I have seconded that. Do you have any comment? I have no comments. But I will sign the receipt for the website. Okay. Just because I like to see, you know. You're right. Challenge. No, I'm not. Sure you're right. No. <laughs> um, but when, when uh, we had this discussion last time, you originally proposed 10,000. Um, it was a rough night. Um, 10,000, I, I, I proposed, I, I pointed to the 10,000 that we had initially had been asked. Would you like to say? Yes. Trustee Moore moved to reallocate 10,000 from ARPA funds to assist YSCC in hiring a part-time staff person. The motion died without a second. Okay, I guess that's what I did. Uh, I would be interested in comments towards like why, where did the number 20 come from? I asked about proportionality and for whatever reason, last time I thought 10,000 was what we were being asked, but maybe there wasn't an ask. But. Yeah, 20,000 was the ask, but honestly, I think um, part of it was trying to project out like maybe a year and a half, mm -hmm. but as our memo highlighted, we need to figure out like after a year, is this effective? And the village has already talked about potentially <coughs> pulling the position into the village um, because we need economic development development activity. So I think ten thousand is a great number. And I noticed, I noticed in your budget for twenty twenty four, <laughs> yeah, budget to fifty thousand. Yeah, for an additional expense. It wasn't earmarked as, as this, but you, you did have a number of 50,000. Yep. And so 40 and 10 would, would cover that. I think it also, you know, I think it's also proportional. I think our budgets are about four to one. So um, based um, on- the, We can have a whole other argument about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least based on what I, you know, have seen. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a reasonable number. And, um, you know, part of the memo highlights that we're committed to regular report outs to both the township and the village. Um, so I think that's a great decision if you're comfortable with that. Well, we haven't voted yet. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, but just to ask, like, I think 10,000 is a good number. I think we'll be able to secure a good part-time person. And uh, again, we're reviewing eight awesome candidates tomorrow. So. Any other discussion? Um, I just want to <clears throat> reiterate your, the original ask um, emphasize that this is a time to do it. There's things that are, I mean, if, if we don't get a, a person here that tries to attract and build off of the economic development that's happening to the east of us, then mm -hmm. we don't know if it's going to work, but we sure as heck don't want to sit there and, and not try. So, yeah, yeah. at this point important juncture. That's all. Any further? Mm -hmm. You don't want me to tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, please <laughs> call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to contribute $10,000 to the Yellow Springs Development Corporation Fund for a part-time executive director. Sufficient? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mucher. Sure. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion to approve. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And yeah, again, I want to say we appreciate the partnership. And I'm sorry it's not reflected in that memo, but um, it was really cool to see that you guys donated that 10000 during COVID. So that was great. And the, uh, the business that is there now is called YS. Firehouse.
<laughs> See? <laughs> and I would say it has generated some economic multiplier. Effect. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, no question. Even though it's not fully open yet. Uh, which is irrelevant. That doesn't have to be in the minutes. Yeah. I, what do you have? If you like. If you like. I mean, I, you, it sounded like you, you, you were dismissing them, but I t was like, telling them they're welcome to say that. Oh. <laughs> welcome. I mean, I, yeah, we have a couple more major items. Uh, Krista McGaw speaking on behalf of Tecumseh Land Trust. Yeah. Uh, as a volunteer today, it's good to see you guys again. Um, I, uh, and by the way, I am running for the Ohio House, but I'm not here as a candidate today. <laughs> I am here as a TLT volunteer. Uh, but I will be around and be happy to talk to you guys more sometime uh, about township needs, because that's something that's, that's pretty important to me. It's a very rural district that I'm running for. So uh, getting the support that rural districts need is, is real important. Um, Krista, give me just a second. Okay. For having farm control that I gave to your response. Or green space. <laughs> 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 That's just me, I'm sorry, Kristen. Would you repeat that? I'm here today to uh, underline the need, the, the importance of having green space funds or, or farmland preservation funds um, as a tool for local government. And um, there is a property that we're going to talk a little bit about uh, that is um, going to go to auction fairly soon uh, that has been a priority for Tecumseh Land Trust and for the village for quite some time. Um, the, uh, I, I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time. I think a lot of you guys really know about how the land trust works, but, but just to kind of put it into a little bit of a framework. It's a nonprofit organization, um, but it does uh, channel money to landowners uh, on a regular basis. Um, there uh, now have been 36,000 acres preserved, uh, and there's a nice little summary. I think I've got a couple extra copies of that in addition to what the trustees receive that just kind of explains the work that the Council Land Trust has done. Um, and that is over since their founding in 1990. It was an all-volunteer organization until I got the opportunity to be the first executive director. And I worked there for 20 years, and it was a blast. I mean, just, just really interesting. From the beginning, the priority for the land trust was um, trying to preserve what little remnants of the land that Tecumseh saw and paddled through, mm -hmm. basically. And that's how it became to come to the land trust. Uh, the founders uh, discovered pretty, pretty quickly a lot of that land was farmed in the area, and that uh, they needed to learn, you know, educate themselves about farmland and the economics of farmland and that kind of stuff. So uh, over the years, um, the land trust uh, did really get educated, it became a part of a national uh, organization of land trusts, and. Um, I, you know, I'm very proud of, of the job that they've done. Um, the land trust goals obviously do embrace farmland as well as those natural areas. However, they're making great progress on uh, preserving land that improves water quality, that filters the water that goes uh, from the farm fields uh, into our, our rivers and streams. And forests are super important for that. So. Uh, it has um, done a pretty good job of keeping up with strategic plans and having priorities over the years, and so have the local governments that the land trust has worked with, in particular the township and the village of Yale Springs. 
Uh, the land trust has also done work with Clark County, Madison, uh, Clinton, and Champaign to some extent. Uh, but we are founded in, in this area, and uh, this has been the most proactive area as far as the, the township and the village, as far as really planning for what land is, is desired to be protected. And to actually put funds in place to do that is um, unusual, and especially unusual for small areas like this. But uh, it is quite a hit at any kind of land trust event or planning conference because you're in a position where you not only identified your priorities for, for land use and those areas that you want to continue to ma maintain as open space or farmland or uh, natural areas, but you also have some money to come to the table. And that is so, so critical. I mean, it, it just, it makes such a difference to be able to do that. What the uh, township was able to do, and I'm gonna show you guys a map, and I wanna kind of just get the big concepts, because maps are so much fun, and we just look right at the map. And um, So that we've got to identify the, the properties that the township participated in the preservation of. They are, they tend to be more outlying properties, uh, then the village's priority, the village came up with this grain belt idea uh, very early on, really, uh, again, fairly unusual. Um, and I, I don't want to go into all that history, but it, um, both, you know, both entities have been um, working together in many ways over the years. And um, it, it so happened that as Tecumseh Land Trust was finally able to get some other sources of public monies, on the table from the federal government and the state uh, government. Right around the year 2000, uh, I was hired in 2001, suddenly there were these monies available, federal monies and state monies. And they all required match. And they basically required 20% match, minimum. Clean Ohio was the name of the ballot initiative that the citizens put in place in the year 2000. So when I started in late 2004, we were rolling out that program. And our local governments, right in our own neck of the woods, you know, were ready with, with some match and with some priorities, which was very helpful. Some of those applications that we made that the township particularly pitched in on match for um, were uh, sort of miracles of the bureaucracy, is I guess the way I would describe it. The, the people that were implementing the federal program out of the, the, uh, the Farm Bill, downtown in Columbus, Natural Resource Conservation Service employees, they wanted to get all the money that had been allocated to Ohio spent in Ohio, because it's use it or lose it when it comes to the federal government. So they came, they called us and said, oh, you guys seem to have a lot of projects lined up. You've heard, we had 27 people the landowners the first year of Clay, Ohio, that were ready to try to sell a conservation easement on their land. So um, we said, well, yes, indeed we do. And what, uh, how much do you have available? And so we were able to actually go, according to the priorities, to the township or to the village, to, to uh, put those packages together very, very quickly. So, you know, it was money that would have gone to some other state that, that Ohio would not have been able to spend. And so it was a real plus for Ohio's farmland preservation program, for the federal farm bill farm preservation program, and for the local land owners, you know, which was, was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, I'm going to pass around the map here. I'll pass around. Let me get the stand up and make up these up on. I think this shows the funds that the Miami Township gave. Yeah, okay. that's the Miami Township funds. Right. I, I, I do have a little bit of those. I'm going to pass this around. Okay. 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 Okay.
also. I don't see it listed. Oh, um, this was, uh, sorry about that. It, it was, it, the township did. Yep, let me get the credit. It did. I wasn't a trustee at that time. I, I believe it was the monument to sub of 13,500. <laughs> oh, okay. Which was much appreciated. It was a yeah. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a success, it was a success. Um, this, at, at a certain point, um, there were some estate tax monies that were on hand uh, at the township, and this is all money that got spent once that fund got made, and that was after Whitehall. So th this this was the... Uh, so this is the list I have here today. Estate tax. Estate taxes mm -hmm. came back to the township when yep. people died. And that, and that disappeared in like 2011, 2012. And the, the disappearance of that has been hard on, on small local government. Um, so that you can see that on the map that um, the, the brown properties are those that were uh, protected with that farmland preservation fund. The way that it was set up by the township was um, to uh, be spent down and then as the estate taxes came back from people who had passed away, um, they would build it up to this cap of, I, I want to say it was $109,000 or something Some like around that. There, yeah. And um, so the land trust knew what we were working with. You know, how much, how far could we use that money to use up this federal money that was all of a sudden on the, fall, on the table almost every fall? You know, so it was like a real regular kind of kind of process that we were able to take advantage of, which we would not have been able to if we didn't have a fund in place. Um, so the, you can see that the more remote properties are the ones that were township priorities. The closer to town uh, properties uh, were uh, participated in generally by the village, and we're not differentiating that today, but there has been a fair amount of, of green space fund from the village over the years that uh, has gone into some of those projects as well. Um, the um, reason that I'm here today is that there is a property that is highlighted in black here on, on uh, Dayton Hill Springs Road, uh, the uh, Welsh property, the green, little green, dark green pres preserve piece just to the west of that block uh, was the Elder Welsh Farmstead. And it was a property that went on auction, uh, I guess it was the early days of the land trust. I'm not sure what quite, what year quite, but um, it was a collaborative uh, event as well and really got that relationship built. Uh, between the, the, the village township and them. And did the former trustee put that in the, the land trust? Into the land trust? Uh, it was, it, it, he bought it after. It was after? Yeah, I think, or yeah, I think so. He bought it at auction, I think was the way it went. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, um, it, it, um, the overall schema here has been that there's been some really good farmland, prime land that's been protected by the, the township funds. Uh, there's been targeted lands that the village wanted to protect to prevent too much growth. And that, that was really clearly a, a goal from the beginning. But also to create this feel of nature and, and uh, a, a, a small rural place with an active downtown. Um, you can see the, the white area that is um, surrounded by the preserved property um, to see where is there land close to Yellow Springs that does not have any kind of conservation but, but, but the light green is unprotected at this point, right? That, yeah, right, right, that's true. There's, that is unprotected, and in addition to that, but it is a, it's it priority. Is a target, it is a priority of the village so far. And the village, I hope people noticed that in the paper this last week, the village has got uh, Elise Giradillo, is that right? Who, who has yep. been hired to write the next village land use plan. And so, uh, so it's, they're going to bring it in house, uh, which is, I think, a kind of an interesting idea. And so that, I hope, will be another very good planning process that will not just reflect the village, but hopefully also the coordination with the township. 
And I just can't say enough about how important I think that is. Definitely, that's the land trust preferred method of business. Show up when the planning is going on and, and say your piece, uh, you know, early on and hopefully get get a good solution that's mutually beneficial. So what you said was Deirdre, who was just, I forget her first name. Yeah, at least Elise. Elise. Yeah. 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 his daughter yeah. was hired and specifically her task is the land use plan for the village. Yes. <coughs> Yes. And it's in last week's paper, if you still have yeah. it around. Yeah, it, it, it is around. So, so anyhow, I was excited to, to hear that because, I mean, the village's priorities have changed. Um, and actually, the township plan, great when the township can update theirs to 2012, mm -hmm. is what the, the, the plan is. So, um, you know, hopefully there will be new, <laughs> there will be new plans, <laughs> you know, that will also, you know, complement each other. That would be a wonderful thing. Um, the Welsh family, uh, Don Welsh died not long ago. Two, two children uh, who are inheriting the, the, the land and his estate. Um, the the pr properties that are highlighted in black, which I believe are about 116 acres, um, are the, the priority property for the land trust and for the village. Okay? <laughs> There are 40, about 41 acres west of that that uh, are being auctioned in advance of the highlighted property. And then there's also some parcels that uh, Mr. Welsh owned on Jackson Road that are also being uh, auctioned ahead of the highlighted properties. Um, Is there a date for the highlighted property? Not yet. I believe August fifteenth is the first auction. Twenty second for the other property. Is it? 22nd? They just put the sign up like oh, oh, for, oh for these mm -hmm. is twenty second so, for the Jackson and the other forty. No, not the big ones, but the the small this ones one. to the west. Oh, the small ones to the west. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So we still don't have right. the. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I might know why. Um, yeah. Right. Do tell. So they're looking at that property because there is a strip in front of it that is owned by the property owner on the opposite side of the road. What? And so they're looking at is that give them road frontage or not. Oh, wow. So my determination was no, that doesn't give them road frontage. Even though it is, right now, it's, it, it, it's a matter of feet. It's mm -hmm. probably the right of way, mm -hmm. but Ooh. it is owned by the property on the opposite side of the road. You're, you're looking at? The black. Yes, I know, but there are two families to the south You're talking about the, the 40 acres that are to the south, place. south of the black. The, the, the there are two separate property. owners. No, I'm right. talking about that black. Okay. Right across the road, the yes. light green there. Yeah. Um, there are two different farms across yeah, the road. Lake property lake and the is the Hoaglands, and then there's somebody else. The lake owns property the owns that sliver, mm -hmm. and so that does take away some road frontage. So mm -hmm. that was my response that no, that that's not road frontage, even though right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's being used to access the field, and I, they may have an easement. Um, huh. But then, so you the, took that call for us while you were working for us. Yeah, huh. an email. So, but but so now the auctioneer is they're looking at. They pulled something up, and just last week he sent me something, and I sent it to Deandra to help me with. Um, because what has happened is the, the document and the deed that they have shows them as separate, but GIS is showing it as one or something. There's, there's a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's the opposite way. Maybe GIS is showing it as separate, but their deed is showing it mm -hmm. as not as mm -hmm. above me. So, <laughs> so I sent that to Deandra and asked her to help me decipher that and what to tell them. So that could be why they're holding off on that, because more red frontage, the more lots they could get. Yeah. And it, just to say, you know, it's hard to say how much money that might go for, but, but that the highlighted property there as farmland could easily go for 8,000 an acre. We're talking a million dollars. As big, as big, uh, I think it's about 160. How, how many linear feet of road frontage if there wasn't this consultation? Um, There's enough for 22 is my understanding. Wow. Enough, enough for 22 
three acre lots. So that would be six hundred and sixty. Times my my estimate is at sixty thousand dollars a lot, you're looking at uh, two point three million dollars, and that would not necessarily be high, either. Mm -hmm. uh, would a developer want to buy the whole thing and put in infrastructure? Don't know. Um, infrastructure I think for like a PUD or something. Mm -hmm. One of the um, one of the things that I think um, you know is, is a possibility. Uh, is that it would be divided differential, differentially, you know, so that they saw some less, they saw some chunk of land together. Um, I think one of the big motivations for that, the highlighted property even being a, a priority for the village, is the Western Gateway to Yellow Springs. You know, I mean, it's just been something that has differentiated it from from Beaver Creek. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is farmland in between, but there might not always be, you know, and so that, that's why the focus let, of it. Let, let me repeat my arithmetic question. Yeah. If, if our zoning allow, requires 300 linear feet yeah. per lot, lot right. uh, and you think 66 possible lots, 22. Mm -hmm. did you say? 22? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's very different. Sorry. I just didn't hear it right or remember it right. So so those are just, you know, whack uh, numbers for sure, you know. But but just to say, it, it could suddenly cost a lot of money. Uh, there are going to be farmers who will bid on it. And the land trust is um, has been quietly making uh, contacts with landowners in the area or who and farmers and those aren't always the same thing because a lot of times people are renting a lot of land there's one family that rents a good bit of land um, that's adjacent or very near to that um, so they're interested in getting farmers um, interested in bidding um, they but but it's it's all kind of unknown the modus operandi for the land trust with Whitehall Farm, and then again with the Arnabas property was um, similar, I think, to what's going to happen this time. Look at how many dollars you might be able to get on the table among the concerned um, organizations. And um, you know you have to make that fairly quickly if, in fact, those resources are going to be available. So that's, that's why I'm here today, because uh, it looks like that's going to happen pretty fast. Um, the, you know, again, everybody has to make their own decision, landowners, for sure. I mean, the land trust would not be in business if we had it respected landowners' property rights um, very, very carefully. But um, we're interested in alternatives that, you know, as a, as a land trust volunteer, I like to see the land trust um, looking ahead a little bit if they can. Uh, because you know it, it's it's cliche, I guess maybe, but our our bumper sticker asphalt is the last crop tends to be true. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, somebody will get a multi-million dollar grant to take a parking lot out from a big abandoned mall or something. But um, it's um, you know it's, it's kind of uh, open-ended question: what's going to happen? Uh, it's my understanding I think that there are some monies that. that are available at the township that could be, you know, at least for some some foreseeable period uh, set aside with with that possibility. But there would still have to be, you know, further discussions about about making that set money. aside the loan rather than a grant. Set it, set, well, no, set aside the, the the loan thing has not really ever been inspired except for. The, uh, the land trust did a little bit of that that was reimbursed by Nature Conservancy oh, at a later so then point. What, what is the set aside? The land trust is going to have come up with some of their own money that they'll put on the table mm -hmm. with the village if the village decides they want to participate in that and, and the township if the township decides they want to participate in that. If the township had a fund, uh, what I would add further is 
it does give you power in other situations if there were other priorities that would be a pro, you know, a priority for you. It's a commitment. It's not a. It, it's not a. Um, it's not a done deal. It's, it's not. A, it's going to depend so, on the buyer. So the buyer wants to do it. Oh, oh it's the land. That's absolutely. But there's an option, not for this piece, but for the other Welsh pieces on the 15th of August. Chris said the 23rd. And the 21st of August. Yeah, I think mean, two two different dates. Oh. The Jackson Road okay. ones are the 15th, I believe. Okay. And so I it was the 22nd. You want a figure tonight? Um, I mean, when's the next auction? Don't know. Is there any rule about how far, to, to be practical, how far in advance do you announce an auction? I, it sounds like they're stalled only because they've had some problems with boundary lines. And to mention that they The expectation was they would, <laughs> they would start auctioning them off. It, as soon as they know how much they're going to get, for one, mm -hmm. they go into the next auction knowing how much they got for the first one, and then they go into the next one knowing what the other ones brought. They're not going to do them all at once, like some different auctions do it, but it appears that that's well, see, when, you know, when Agraria uh, was purchased, I mean, you know, these details are maybe better than me. Um, the, Many solutions had to put down 10% that night, and then we scrambled for six weeks to come up with the money we didn't, and we had no idea where it was going to come from. And there was an agreement that the land trust had made, um, basically available to any bidders mm -hmm. about a, a basic kind of easement that could be that you know we were saying we have this much money we're willing to you know work with you um and so i figure you know that's kind of what what we so the to. yellow springs development corporation <laughs> <laughs> no, now we're rolling it up <laughs> <laughs> <Joke is here>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and I, you know i just don't I, you know i again i i I'm just a volunteer here, you know. So I, um, I think I have a basic idea of where the land trust is at, and I, I have been. I'm knowing after Mr. Welsh died, we anticipated that this was very likely because neither of his kids were farmers, and one of them lived very far away. Oklahoma, you know. There you go. So, um, so it's you know kind of something that we've been, you know, we've seen uh, potentially coming. And I, I don't mean to say it's the only important piece of land to 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 protect or to have a say in either. Um, but having, if you have a fund um, that your decision makers for your local government can use, um, you're a step ahead as far as having power on the table. Well, we don't have a green space fund. As no. far as I, know. I mean, as far as I know. Right. I mean, the only thing we have is. What soon needs to be obligated, which is our ARPA COVID funds, which mm -hmm. we just donated ten thousand of here. Um, I just wanted to say, I, I, yeah. And I think that farmland preservation fund, yeah, the end of the state estate tax, mm -hmm. was, you know, that that wiped it out, and and the village had just decided it was going to dedicate a certain amount. Of, the estate tax that came back to them from the state as well, and like within two months, the state ended the state mm -hmm. the state tax. So, so Krista, is it relevant to highlight the leveraging piece of the green space fund and you know just the federal dollars that you guys? Oh, and yeah, thing? I think that that's pretty nicely laid out here in the in the chart too. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, basically the um, du double money that the township put in, mm -hmm. a little bit more than that. Yeah. So we put in, we being the township, I was in here, about half, half a million dollars. Yeah. And got, and got a million dollars from the federal government mm -hmm. and got, you know, in terms of the, that rural field goal and farming uh, as an industry, 
you know, definitely secured some some of the land. So how much money does the village have in its two hundred and nine thousand ish mm -hmm. currently. Do you foresee um, participating, or have you not invited them in? Uh, Michelle has reached out to us mm -hmm. uh, offline, so we're going to be having conversations. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think the environmental commissions had discussions yep. and stuff too. So it's um, it, you know it, it's it's a delicate thing to talk about somebody's land. You know, <laughs> and I think especially yeah. when it comes to government, you know, because people do not like takings. You know, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're coming to the table with money, just like everybody else. That's that's a different matter. Once once you know well, historically that farm and what's across the road from it uh, was the biggest target that the village has had in mm -hmm. terms of priority of not wanting strip development along the highway yeah. or along Dayton Street, Dayton Yellow Springs Road. So I'm I, I've heard the, the great lore of the White House story and how it went down and everything just had to be right. So the, the easement, the actual language of the easement, when does that come? First of all, you, a buyer would likely want the front lots, right? I and mean, what, what would a buyer want? So you, and then we would be looking about the land behind, but we don't know anything. Yeah, yet, and it's I just don't know. Depends on whether they're a farmer or a developer. It, oh, and just to say, in terms of the real estate business, I mean, what happened with Arnavid's farm, for example, is the, the, the sellers reach out to developers, you know, so that possibility of somebody doing a PUD of some sort, I mean, that would be a part of how long do they stay this off, because I, I would think that the realtor they're working with would suggest that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, or just simply dividing it up per our zoning. Mm -hmm. If they could do, you know, minimum acreage, minimum road frontage, how many lots could they get and sell it that way? That's what I expect. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. And I, I, I think I take the 22 lots from Michelle's measurement. I, I'm not crisp on that. that. Um, well, I have a couple things. Like one is. We, we, we do have these funds right now. We we actually passed a resolution to for purposes within the fire state that can be reversed or but we, we we haven't really had a conversation yet. I mean we've kind of stared down at each other a little bit. We can have one now. <laughs> um, I don't. I'm not prepared to have that conversation tonight. But um, I or if we're expected to have it tonight. I mean, do we have, are you trying to walk away with an answer? I don't know that I could. I, I came in Michelle's place and I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, uh, that's, I mean, it, we just don't know. We don't know. Do. You we know, they obviously talk between the three of us. Um, right now it's allocated for the fire station, but, um, and then the second thing was, um, and I realized we don't know who's going to buy it or what they want to do. Um, I, I had talked to Michelle about it. Um, and I, I don't know when you guys have a kind of a traditional easement where you, it just, the easements say no development of yeah, there's, any kind. There's, there's the, the most basic one probably is just farm land easements where somebody can donate an easement on their farmland and um, they, they, if it's prime soil, um, the land trust is probably going to be fine with their continuing to farm as is. Um, there might be some general recommendation about best practices. Mm -hmm. um, particularly if there's water going across it because the land trust doesn't want to cause water pollution. But it would be pretty basic and usually there's reserve rights for, for one resident residents and um, maybe a limitation on the footprint or something like that. But it's pretty it can be pretty basic or it can be really complicated, you know, depending on what the property is like and the landowner wants to do. And and, and what I discussed with Michelle and I don't know how this works. If there, there's a high transmission line going down Snip Road, so 
that would be a really nice place for solar. And I'm just letting you know that's right there on the line. And I know in the past, some of your easements have been inflexible about solar. And I just don't know if you guys have evolved in the what you're willing to think about. And also, we know that Agraria right across the street, right? Agraria right across the street? Yeah. They've yeah, done a million... With very little frontage, but yeah, mm -hmm. it is they've right across. They've done a million dollar project in restoration of the Jacoby stream. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look like it, but it does follow a lot of it's buried, but it, it that area it feeds, it totally feeds. And yeah. there was even, Michelle was involved in a discussion of, um, they had done, a, I forget, the EPA has these studies that, that you do community study and get funding to even unearth. It was some water it, source project. Yeah, wetlands yeah. water source, and that, 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 that does feed the, the Jacoby Creek. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, so I, I even Creek ran some of this. Um, Margaret's son, son was in talks mm -hmm. about okay. unearthing part, part of what has been uh, right yeah. over I by the crack tracks. So, that to, part so that this, this land is really both for solar and for water protection, I think is really, and like you said, you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what the buyer's going to be, but yeah. I just wonder if there's, and, and it, on top of that, there's a time crunch maybe. And, um, I just wonder if there's any flexibility or evolution on well, I do other wanna, types of I, I do want to address the, the flexibility for solar. Um, there um, have have been whenever you do a conservation easement, you do fine envelopes on the property. So you usually have a building envelope with the farmstead area in it. So most of the landowners who have solar arrays on their property, um, I guess I would say all of them. Uh, yeah, they unless it's rooftop, right? They have had a designated envelope where it was acceptable to build residential structures, you know, appurtenant structures to residential. And so um, that's been fine, right? And in fact, like the Stockwells were a good example at uh, Fairfield and, um, and Enid. They knew they wanted to spend the money they got for the easement on a wind turbine and solar panels. And they've added more since they did it. Uh, Steve Pyatt did the same thing with a uh, family that he lives out on the south. North South River, North River. North River. Well, maybe. Um, but so, but um, there are projects now slowly evolving in the country that involve um, agrovoltaics, wherein uh, you can do your row crop farming within the span of where the panels are. So just to say, big development in Madison County. It's well, going to be 6,000 acres. And Ohio State's researching it. Yeah. There, and then there's the Antioch model where they had sheep under the panels. And it's kind of a magic combination because, you know, yeah. they mow for you. And they're, you know, they are a farm product, you know, when, when you're done. So <laughs> there's, so there's various, there's various possibilities, you know, and uh, well, what about the, there's always the, the um, owner's ability to lease their land for a small solar project without having to do the magical agrovertail. I know you can't answer those questions, but I, I guess I'd be community solar or a, allowing the landowner to have an income stream by, I know there are even um, people who've been approached, one of our own zoning commission members who lives very close, I don't know where he lives, um, it gets regular letters from solar companies, and we're not talking about King Kingwood type stuff size things, although they might piece it together, but I just I just wanted to raise that issue, because when, when we looked at um, where it's possible for solar to go in, in the, the township, it was, it was those two lines out by Cedarville, one that we now know turns turns north, mm -hmm. two part lines, and then a, a, a humble little line on, go, that follows all along SNP Road. Um, it doesn't look like a high transmission line, but it can support 
and interconnect to the grid. Not, not, not just simply a, a residential one, but a more of a community level one. And, you know, really the decision about easements and what's permitted on them is, is a negotiation, you know, between the land trustee <laughs> and the landowner. Mm -hmm. uh, but with caveats in terms of anybody else's money that goes into the project, mm -hmm. you know. So Glen Helen was one of the most complex. Uh, it took us nine years to do that. Mm -hmm. Because, and it was like 10, I think it ended up being 13 different pots of money that in some way were involved with that. And so, I mean, it was, I wouldn't wish that on anybody as far as the process goes, I, but, but it worked, you know, and I, in terms of the goal that certainly the land trust had and, and through, you know, the amazing thing is everybody stuck with it even through transition of ownership of the college in Glen. You know, yeah. which was a pretty wonderful thing. So there's, you know, it, it's there's, and everybody's always got to, you know, the land trust just has to feel like their obligation to protect this in the perpetuity. You know, easements can be amended, and that amendment language has to go in up front. Well, what do you mean they can be amended? They can be amended. There's an amendment clause. So, they, but, but they, the Sutton, they weren't willing to do it for Sutton Farm. I didn't felt that were closely. Um, it, it has, you have to basically be at least preserving conservation, the conservation values. So one of the, the examples of amendments is, um, we thought we were gonna do something on this 40 acres over here. Actually, it turns out it's better if we do it on this 40 acres over <coughs> here because it's gonna be better for the watershed. You know, so those kind of those kind of things can get done. And you said co concrete is the last crop. Asphalt's the last yeah. crop. Yeah, asphalt's the last crop. Yeah. And yeah. Just I, I would. It's rare to say that solar isn't concrete. Isn't concrete. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it isn't. But it, I'm being more and more convinced that it, it doesn't wanna... take away. I'm talking. It doesn't take away from the. Um, preservation of farmland. So I this want is to steer this to this specific, the availability of township money for this specific project. Well, yeah, do, do, isn't what we're entering into have to do with whether we want to do that? Yes. Well, Chris, do you have anything? The, the purpose statement in the comprehensive, comprehensive land use plan called Miami Township, an agricultural township, and we are committed to keeping agricultural as a viable economic uh, source for Miami Township. Uh, we've had that since day one. Uh, I don't think there's really that much uh, desire to change from that uh, commitment. Um, we've known about the Wells property for quite a while. Uh, I mean, a long while, not just since it's come up, but you know, it has been earmarked and looked at and committed to and you know we don't want this and we don't want that for probably 30 years, 30 years anyway so and we want more than that and, and it's come up now also through the good works of our fire chief and board of trustees uh, we're in a better position in financing uh, the firehouse than and fire operations than we have been now do we need lots of other stuff? Yes, but $110,000 is not going to buy, you know, all the things that we need in the future. There's, you know, there's going to be a way to get that. We can't just say 110,000. We got to, you know, we got to put it here. We got to put everything we have in one place. We have to have a little bit of flexibility for the bigger picture of the the needs and the wants of the township. Not so much the you know the needs for these easements, but the wants of the residents who have expressed themselves in the establishment of the land use plan that they uh, they prefer to have the township be agriculturally based and economically um, sound in, in agriculture. And I feel that I was elected to be a representative of the people of the township, and until they decide to change comprehensive plan to some other land use, it, I feel it's my obligation to try and proceed as, as conservative, as fiscally responsible 
over all of the, you know, all of the roads and the cemetery and the fire department and the zoning and the, this, that, and the other thing, you know, to try and be fiscally responsible uh, to that end. And I think this is one way to be fiscally responsible uh, because this is not money that we're using for other things. But it's allocated for other things right now. I, I realize that. Yeah. And I, I think that necessity, which was a year, year and a half ago, which was certainly realistic at the time, no question about it. And I, I, I'm not sure if I was the one who suggested it, but it might have been close that, you know, and I certainly agreed to it. But I think we can move away from that right now. And I think we can use these funds uh, for the betterment of our the funds. Yeah, the auto funds. The balance of the funds after the go? <laughs> the YSDC uh, commitment um, for the preservation of Wells property. Keep in mind, these funds are not going away. They will only be used if the land trust is successful in uh, acquiring some of these easements uh, on the property. This fund does not go to them to a, to a pot of funds to be used in the future. I mean, they'd love to have that done, and you know, if we were had lots of money like the village does, we'd put it into a green space fund or, or something too. But this one, if it's not successful, we do not use the funds. And what happens to the funds? They stay in green space? No, they come back to us for whatever we want to use. Well, we have a December thirty first deadline uh, ourselves. Yes. Well, this is going to be so this is going to be settled by December thirty first, assuming the whatever. It, it, you know, the auctions will have, have happened, and that'll be done. If not, I mean, if it, if it doesn't, then we won't be able to commit those funds. We'll have to put them somewhere else. If what? If it doesn't come, if, if the auctions don't happen, happen, if it gets delayed in the court and whatever, if it goes past December thirty first, we will put those funds to some other commitment because that's a drop dead date for us. Some, some other say, defined fund, absolutely. But until that happens, I'd like to see it committed to this project to through its conclusion. So it gets concluded uh, this year. Well, I I need more time to think of, and, and I know the time is of essence. I mean, I'm not going to make that, I don't want to make that decision tonight. I'm, I have very, if we had the time, I'd love to have, we don't have a good handle on our long-term capital outlays for the fire station. I mean, we need a lot. For the fire department. For the department, I mean, we, we I was trying tried to be convinced that, that we didn't need a fire engine. That's not true. I'm, I don't believe we would. I guess what I'm saying is I, I'm not, I don't particularly want to make the decision tonight. You two, of course, are two votes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I will also say that Fred Kraus? Krauser. 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 Krauser was coming here to uh, report tonight on his first task of uh, financial projections for the fire department. That's for pay, payroll and Just staffing. Well, he's been talking also okay. capital needs. Mm -hmm. Maybe he wasn't going to report on that, but uh, we haven't touched capital needs yet. It's strictly okay. been on pay capital needs is is next. <clears throat> well, capital needs as important that they are, and they certainly are, don't get me wrong, and I feel we put blood, sweat, and tears in getting this fire department to where it is today. Mm -hmm. But with the capital that we have, we're not gonna buy any more big stuff. We're gonna have to put another levy on the ballot specifically for new equipment. We cannot do it out of the funding that we have now. And this 100,000 is not gonna make much of a change in that. Well, do you have a motion? I'd like to move that we commit the balance of the our fund money, and I don't have the exact amount, but it was like 133, and if we take 10 off of that, so then that's 113, if that's the case, but I'll just call it the balance, uh, to commit to uh, TLT's use in the event that they are successful in purchasing easements on the Wells property before December 31st, uh, 2024. 
I'll second that. I think it's outrageous to make that decision having had presented to me for the first time 20 minutes ago. So I, I'm not in favor of having this vote tonight, but there are, two, there are three of us. And this motion is specific to the Welsh property. Unless it isn't settled by December 31st, then it's stuck in the Green Fund. I mean, it's available in the Green Fund. If it's not available. No, no, it's not available. This fund? No, I think, I thought what I heard you say was, um, you'd like to make that available and it'll probably be settled by December 31st. Mm -hmm. if, if, if it isn't used, we could allocate it any way we like. Right, we can put it right back in the fire. But, department. but if, but we have, to, we personally have to go, we have a deadline of December right. 31st. And so, mm -hmm. but if it isn't settled by December 31st, that money would be allocated for green space and then it would be in there. That's not what I heard. Mm -hmm. What words do you I have? I don't have anything about green space allocated. Well, is it strictly for the Welsh property. Is it Welsh or Welsh? Well, Welsh. maybe Welsh. I maybe I maybe yeah. I added. Maybe grapes. That's right. Yep. <laughs> maybe, maybe I added the word green space, but if it isn't settled by December thirty first, it's already allocated for that type of purpose. We have to. We well, have, that's true. We have to take. We'd have to take some language and maybe call it green space, just so that we could satisfy the federal government that we allocated it to, to well, we have the ability to change that what's that we have the ability to change it any way we want just, just as we already have. have only until december 31st that's true well yeah well that's that's another discussion if we get that close i mean if we get to mid-december or, or early december and the auction's not even set yet well we're not going to be spending this money on it so then we need to decide what we want to but, but if, if, if they're working toward that, I already know what you guys are going to want. I mean, you're going to want to... We want to have that discussion then. We just don't know how far out that would be and what we want to do. We need to, you need to repeat your motion because... Well, what Cindy, I have, this is what I have. I have moved to commit the balance of the ARPA funds to TLT land use for the purchase of easements on the Welch property by December 31st, 2024. Successful purchase. Successful purchase. But let's uh, spell out Tecumseh Land Trust. Yes, I would do that. that that's what I that's, that's the motion. It's been moved and seconded. I don't have a second. Oh, I seconded. Thank you. Yeah, he had second. I, I missed yeah, that. Okay. So I'm going to do this all tonight. Okay. And I hear you. Uh, saying that you, we don't have enough information, but I didn't say we don't have enough information. I, 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 I mean, we don't have a rule. I think council has a rule that you, you, you have to, you can't, you have to propose something one night and then move it, and give at least another meeting before it's done. And we don't have a rule that we can't, that we, that we could just off and make a big decision that night. <laughs> so, do what you got to do. I mean, do 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 it. That's because we don't have five people who can't agree on it. More to say? No. Nope. Call the roll, please. Mr. Mercer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Meyer. Um, no. Motion is approved. We have a full evening, and we're not done. We have planned an executive session regarding employee review. Okay, returning to open session. 8.30-ish. It's at 8.27. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion. As a result of? As a result of our determinations, uh, so I would move that we adjust our fire chief's salary um, to a total of 86,800. No, I'm sorry. We're going to go to 87. Total of $87,000 per year 
retroactive to May 10th, was it? 20th. May 20th. And within, between now and the next uh, public board meeting, we will uh, determine the most fair way to adjust compensation again due to the elimination of comp time and volunteer pay money. That's my motion. Do I hear a second? I second. Do you have a any discussion? You're about to comment. <laughs> no. I have no more uh, discussion. Then I'll call the roll. Trustee Mutcher? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Hollister? Yes. I have one more motion that may be appropriate. Okay. That we amend the personnel menu to state that comp time for exempted and exempted salary employees be changed to flex time. Okay. I mean, are we eliminating those two things tonight as well? Might as well. Okay. Uh, I'll okay, make well, I, I withdraw the motion. We'll, we'll just settle it when we settle the yeah, I think we'll, we'll rewrite the policy soon. Okay. Okay. It'll be part of the whole adjustment that's coming yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I will move for adjournment. I, I, I declare this meeting adjourned.